So today we're in section uh, 5.4, writing and solving proportions. Three methods to solve proportions. Here's your first method, mental math. Don't we love mental math? What does mental math mean about showing your work? There's no work really to show, okay? However, I do want you, um, I think it's a good idea to write in a little bit of work into these proportions, and I'll show you what I mean by that. Um, however, mental math really means that these problems are very possible to do um, in your head. 3 over 2 equals x over 8. And I'm going to focus on the side of the proportion where I know both sides of the ratio. So not the side of the proportion with the variable, okay? So does everybody agree that would be my denominators, 2 to 8? All right, so the question I ask myself is, how do I get from 2 to 8? And this is purely multiplication or division. How do I get from 2 to 8, guys? Multiply 2 times 4 equals 8. We're always going from the side with the complete ratio to the side that has the variable. So 2 times, what did you say? 4, four equals 8. So 4 is what I call my missing link. If that's what I'm doing to the denominator, I have to plug in the same number in my numerator. Not necessarily counted off for not showing work if you don't have it, but it's helpful because it gives you a visual that 3 times 4 equals 12, and that's the value that x has to be in order for it to be a proportion, okay? So once you figure out the missing link, you can use it on the side that you don't know to find that unknown amount. All right, I want you to go ahead and try it on the second one now. Okay, so missing link here, guys. Five times what equals 20? Four. Five times four equals 20. So eight times four equals 32. Raise your hand if you got it. 32, okay, good. Okay, now I'm going to give you two more uh, types of problems that you might see, okay? Again, with the mental math method, I'm looking for a clear connection between the sides of the proportion that I know. In this case, it would be 7 and 35. 7 and 35. I want you to fill in that missing number. Go ahead and fill in the missing number. How would I get from 7 to 35? All right, and what number is that, guys? That's a five, but I have to consider, remember what I said at the beginning of the lesson? Yes, I'm going from the side with a completed ratio over to the side that has the variable. So how do I get from 35 to seven? I divide by five, so I need to divide 40 divided by five to get what value? Eight, Eight. okay? Now, you cannot say, oh, well, the x is in the first fraction, so I'm dividing, or the x is in the fraction after the equal, so I'm multiplying, because it could very well be flipped. What if you had this proportion? And this is the last one that we'll do using uh, mental math. Okay, so how do I know if it's going to be multiplication or division? Well, first of all, what is my missing link? Three. Three, okay? So here's how you know if it's multiplication or division. From the side that you know to the side you're solving for, do you have to multiply or divide by the missing link? You have to divide, so that means 45 divided by 3 is 15. Okay? You got that? Do you see when you need to multiply or when you need to divide? Okay, so let's go to example 2 now. In example two, we're using multiplication. This is the reciprocal. So we're kind of treating this like solving an equation. What value is connected to my variable? And um, what can I do to get the variable uh, by itself? All right, so what value is connected to my variable and what can I do in this case, in the first one, to get x by itself? So we're going to ignore the fact that it, you could actually use mental math on the first one. Okay, now when we get down to the end, kind of what I said, setting up this lesson, you get to choose whatever method you want, all right? And I'm hoping to give you a little bit of guidance as to when you should choose what method, okay? 
but we need to teach them all, and then we'll get to that point at the end. All right, so in order to solve for x, I look for the value that is connected to x. So what number is connected to x? 21. 21. So I need to multiply both sides by 21. Both sides by 21. All right, now that I know that x is by itself on the right side, is there anything I can cross-reduce on the left side? What can I cross-reduce? 7 and 21 to a 3, and x equals 15. Wait a second. I said 15 equals x. Is that the same thing? Yes. It is the same thing, okay? So you can really write it either way. All right, I want you to try to solve the second one, and I know, um, you know, Again, this might not end up being your method of preference, but let's go ahead and practice it, all right, just uh, for the sake of this, this example. Try to figure out what you're going to multiply both sides by and solve for W. All right, we multiply both sides by what? Six. six the number that's connected to W. Multiply both sides by six. Okay, now, 12 over 3 is not my answer. I didn't know it was going to go that fast. Um, 12 over 3 is not my answer. It reduces to what? 4. Four. Okay, who got that? Okay, using multiplication. So this is method number 2, algebra or multiplication. All right, now method number 3 is going to be very familiar to you. Cross products. Cross products is the method that works every single time. However, when there's a clear connection between the numbers and I could solve it using mental math, cross products actually ends up being more work, okay? So I would say that those are probably my two methods that I would, that I would gravitate towards. Like if there's an easy, clear connection, I'm using mental math. If not, I'm gonna use cross products, all right? We see probably more mistakes with example two in the multiplication, whether it's reducing or multiplying. All right, so now let's focus in on cross products. Cross products, guys, we used this in the last section to test whether or not values were proportionate. Now, the only difference is I don't know one of the values. All right, so when I multiply 10 times x, what do I get? 10x. 10x. And now when I multiply 7 times 8, what do I get? 56. 56. And now I have formed an equation that has a variable to solve. And so what would I do to both sides? Divide, Divide by 10. And oftentimes these answers will not be whole numbers and that's perfectly fine, all right? There is a way to check this, all right? How do you think you could check this? Okay, divide it by, all right, go ahead and plug it back in for X. And then you could find the value of both ratios, or you could then do cross products again and make sure that those numbers are equal, okay? Um, you could do that to check if you wanted, all right? Now, go ahead and write down this second proportion. Go ahead. Now, the checking part, guys, of proportions, uh, that will never be required. That's just something you can do on your own. Go ahead and write down the second proportion. 40 over Z plus one, equals 15 over 6. Go ahead and write that down. Hey, what do you notice? <laughs> what do you notice is different? Yeah, you got z plus 1 in the denominator. So that's a little different, but I'm still going to use cross products 15 times z plus 1 equals 40 times 6. I can't do z plus 1 together, they are not like terms, but I can multiply it by its cross product, okay? So now 15 times z is 15z, and 15 times 1 is, well, 15, okay, we're multiplying, that's a really, that brings up a good question though, make sure you are multiplying these, not adding them okay, equals 240. I now have a two-step equation that I can use to solve for z, okay? Go ahead and do that. Solve your two-step equation. Okay, what do I do to both sides first? Subtract 15 from both sides. All right, 15z equals 225. Divide both sides by 
15, and z equals 15. Okay, there's a lot of 15s. Now, what does it mean about 225 if I divided by 15 and my answer was 15? 225 is a what? Starts with a P. Perfect square. It is a perfect square. What does it mean for a number to be a perfect square? That means you could do the square unit. Two of the same numbers. Yes, it's factor. Sarah, what are you going to say? Yes, it has an even square root. So it, it has a factor that can be multiplied by itself. So Kennedy was right when she said that's a lot of 15s. If I divide by a number and my answer is that same number, that means the number I divided was a perfect square. Okay, and that's just a little little tidbit. That doesn't really have anything to do with example three. All right, any questions? So, so far in our first three examples, are you listening? Zach, up here. In our first three examples, we have looked at three methods for solving proportions. On your homework, on your quiz, on your test, here's what I'm going to say. Solve the proportion and explain your method. So if you use cross products, but you can't tell me it was cross products, that will lose points, okay? If you use mental math, the missing link, but you can't tell me it was mental math, you would lose points for that. So you need to be able to identify your method, but here's the benefit. You can use whatever method you want. So you could use cross products on all of them if you wanted. Now mental math won't work on all of them. When does it not work? When does mental math not work? In this well, line. Do yeah, when, okay, if it's two-step or, or when there's no clear connection, there's no whole number that's a missing link, okay? So let's look at example four now. In example four, we are now writing our own proportions. We're going to look at three different ways that we have to do this, all right? Why do I give you three different perspectives? Because that's what you're going to see on your homework, on your quiz, on your test. There's so many different ways that we can show proportions. All right, so here's the first um, uh, type of problem that we can see. Find the value of x so that the ratios 3, 8, 3 to 8 and x to 20 are equivalent. You need to put this into fractions. Okay, so 3 over 8 and x over 20. 3 over 8 and x over 20. Actually, sorry, I think we're looking at four different scenarios. 3 over 8 and x over 20. So now that I have it in a proportion format, I can choose whatever method I want. All right, does mental math work on this? No. Is there a clear missing link between 8 and 20? No, there's not. Now, I might be able to figure out a missing link, but that's just more work than really is necessary and I'm probably finished with cross products before you find the missing link, okay? So go ahead and just use cross products to solve for x. Did you write 8x equals 60? Yes. Did you divide both sides by 8? Yes. Okay, so there we go. 7 and a half. Now on my next example, this one um, may be written, I would say, sort of in the most confusing way because, goodness, look at all the different combinations that I'm looking at. All right, but remember what I've told you about writing your own proportion. What do you have to make sure of? That you're comparing the same units on top and bottom, both sides, correct? So let's identify what does 2 stand for? What does two stand for according to my recipe? Oh, water. Two stands for water. What does one and a half stand for? Black beans. Black the beans. Ooh. So on the other side, I need water over beans. Does six stand for water? Yes. No. Six is beans. So on A, I have water over beans on the original equals beans over water. Do those match up? No. no, they do not. So A is not a possibility. Okay? Remember, when I'm setting up a proportion, there are multiple ways to set it up, but I must be comparing the same units on both sides. So let's look at B. Now on B, I have beans over water equals, what is X? Water over beans. Again, it doesn't match up. B is out. 
Okay, do you see why? Yes. Again, it's got to match up on both sides of the proportion. So now let's look at C. Now on C, we have the original beans over the new beans in the recipe, like the doubled or tripled or quadrupled recipe. But X is the new recipe over the original. So again, on C, I have original over new, but then on the other side, I have new over original. It still does not match up, all right? And don't you love it when they say, like, none of the above, <laughs> right? So we still, you might have that option on your homework. We still have to make sure that D checks out, okay? Even though I know that I've already eliminated three of my options. On D, I have beans over water, and then what did six stand for? Beans. Beans over water. So that's why D is an acceptable proportion to represent what I'm solving for. All right, here's what I need you to take away from this. I'm not even doing any math. I'm not solving it. All right, I need you to take this away, okay? And you actually have already learned this. To set up a proportion, I must set up the same units on both sides of the proportion. Beans over water, water over beans. There's a couple different ways to set it up, okay? Questions? Questions? All right, that's just all I'm looking for. Okay, next one. I've never heard of this kind of dinosaur. Has anybody else? Yeah. This is straight from your book. Titanic. Okay, no, it's a dinosaur. Okay? But when you're setting up a proportion, what did I just say? Same unit, both sides. Try to set up your proportion here. Example four. Again, I'm trying to give you as many different scenarios as possible that you would see on a homework quiz, test, SAT, all of that, right? So proportions are, are a pretty big part of, of what you're supposed to learn in the seventh grade. All right, so this is a really, really important lesson. All right, does someone want to raise their hand and tell me how you set up your proportion? How did, does everybody have it set up? No. You still work? Not solved, but just set up. Just set up? You don't have it set up? No? Yes? No? All right, Jason, how'd you set it up? Okay, that's how I did it, too. 50 over 2, so that's gallons of blood over heartbeats. Blood over heartbeats equals blood over don't know how many heartbeats. Okay, um, how many of you used mental math? Is there a clear connection up here in my numerators? Yeah, yeah that's the one I did, too. Could you use cross products also? Yes. Absolutely. Okay, if you did mental math, what is my missing link? 20. 20. So then 2 times 20 is 40. 40. So H equals 40. Guys, you've got to make sure you label. What's my label? 40 heartbeats. Heartbeats. Can we put HB? No. Okay, that's not a common abbreviation. If you did cross products, you got 50 H. Please be quiet. Equals 2,000. Divide both sides by uh, 50, and you still get 40. All right, any questions on setting up this proportion? Again, we come back to same thing on both sides of the proportion. It's going to work out. So if you had done heartbeats over blood, you still would have got the same answer. Yes. Okay? All right, last slide and we're done. Yes. Now you have the information in a table. My suggestion to you, make a ratio out of May, make a ratio out of June, and set them equal to each other. You could also do a ratio of winners and a ratio of entries as long as it goes from May to June on both sides, okay? Now, I'm just showing you that. Could you do it even backwards going up? Sure, okay? But why complicate things, all right? Just put it into a ratio, put it into a ratio, and set them equal, all right? But I do need you to understand that you know, and it, it makes for grading a little, little bit more interesting, but there's multiple ways that you can set this up, and that's okay. All right, you're not limited to just one way. I have to do it in this order every single time. Just need to be comparing the same unit on both sides. Okay, so I went N over 85 equals 34 over 170. Um, I did cross products. You could, 
try to find the missing link, and there is one. It's actually a whole number, um, but you would have to kind of divide it and, you know, whatnot. There's not an obvious missing link. Just do cross products. 170N equals 2,890. What do I divide both sides by? 170, and I get my answer. 17, don't forget to label, 17 winners in May based on the same proportion or the same ratio that happened in June. Okay? All right, and that's everything you need to know for Section 5.4.